and Prishti. So moving on from the plasma membrane, we would move to the other part of the outer membrane, that is the cell wall. The cell wall basically is the outermost covering that has two primary functions. One is the protection and second is the providing of the shape to the cell. So what are the components which provide actually the shape as well as uh, the protection are different and that's how the various bacteria differ. So earlier we had studied about staining of bacterial cell. Cell walls play a major crucial role in actual staining of the bacterial cell. So as we studied earlier, there are two types of bacteria based on the cell wall. That is the gram-positive bacteria and the gram-negative bacteria. So what the difference is between, apart from the differences, there are certain common moieties that are present. The cell wall basically consists of the peptidoglycan units or the murine. which provides the shape. So this peptidoglycan actually differs in these two kinds of bacteria. So what happens is gram-positive bacteria is the cell wall is primarily consisting of just the peptidoglycan units crossing between each other. So what does the peptidoglycan actually consist of is basically the N-acetyl glucosamines that is the NAC and N-acetyl muramic acid. So that is the NAC. Apart from that, there are four amino acids which are present inside the cell wall. So basic composition of the peptidoglycan remains generally common. What happens in gram-positive bacteria is that we have just the NAG and NAM residues which are cross-linked. In this case, the NAG and NAM residues are directly linked instead of crossing. Overall, apart from this, the gram-negative bacteria, the cell wall is actually a very complex one. Apart from the type of lichen, they have LPS, that is the lipopolysaccharides. The LPS basic consists of three things. One is the lipid A, the O polysaccharide and the O antigen. So this actually forms the outer covering. For these bacterial cells. So what happens is during the staining, when we add the crystal violet dye, so in case of gram positive bacteria, the crystal violet actually permeates inside and actually binds to the nagenam residues. So a permanent staining occurs. But in case of gram-negative bacteria, what happens is that the LPS layer actually blocks the crystal violet from entering into the cell membrane. So what happens is that the staining is actually a temporary one. So as soon as we do a washing, the stain is permanently lost at this point. So that's why in gram-negative bacteria, we get a negative test, that is we, we get a pink colored colony like we studied earlier. And in the gram positive bacteria, we have the violet color colonies. So apart from cell wall, we have various other structures that are present inside the bacterial cell. These structures include basically the intermembranous, internal membranous systems. There are various kinds of internal membranous systems that are present associated with the plasma membrane. One of them are mesosomes that I had already said about. Mesosomes actually perform the function that your mitochondria performs in the cell. So it is generally associated with the plasma membrane and performs the function associated with the plasma membrane. Plus, it has been found that mesosomes are generally prominent in case the, when the cell is dividing. So it is also thought to be as associated with the nuclear division of the cell. Apart from mesosome, 
there are various other structures which are associated with the plasma membrane and somehow kind of replacement to the obinkies that a eukaryotic cell would have which are not present in the prokaryotic cell. But these uh, structures, uh, even mesosomes, may be present or may not be present and these differ from the various kinds of bacteria that are there uh, throughout. So, apart from internal membrane systems, we also have the periplasmic space. This is the periplasmic space that we have. The width of the periplasmic scale, uh, space differs greatly between the gram positive and the gram negative bacteria. So, as we can clearly see, the periplasmic space is the space between the plasma membrane and the cell wall. So, what are the basic functions of periplasmic spaces? That firstly, it contains peptidoglycans, which would actually eventually be forming the cell wall. Therefore, since it has peptidoglycans, it would definitely have enzymes for peptidoglycan synthesis. Also, it has been found that the periplasmic space also contains certain enzymes for the ATC or respiratory system. So basically, uh, in gram-negative bacteria, generally a periplasmic space is very small because of the presence of the outer wall. So what happens is see, all these enzymes that are present in the periplasmic space, they do not exist in uh, gram-negative bacteria. Also, the cell wall is also very thin in gram-negative bacteria as compared to the gram-positive bacteria. So these are the basic functions of a periplasmic space.